Bubble Bobble for the NES, a great port of a classic arcade game. Aside from Super Mario Bros., Bubble Bobble is probably the first video game I ever played, so you'll excuse me if I get a bit misty-eyed about it. With that in mind, I'd like to say that Bubble Bobble is pure, understilled gaming essence. It covers the three golden rules of classic arcade gaming. A simple idea, surprisingly deep gameplay, and loads of levels. And a co-op mode, so I guess four golden rules. And it's got really good music, so five. Five golden rules. In each of the 100 levels, the aim is to kill all the enemies by trapping them in bubbles and then popping them either by jumping on them, trapping them against a wall, or making them touch the spines on your back. It doesn't sound too complicated, but when you factor in some truly inspired level design, incorporating tricky jumps, special air currents, hidden pitfalls and special items, you'll find that you often have to really think about the best way of tackling a level. Sometimes enemies will work their way into spots that look like you can't get in without dying, but you can. This is rather difficult. To give the game a sense of urgency, if you let an enemy float around in a bubble for too long, it'll turn red and eventually break out and become angry. Angry enemies move faster and are generally more aggressive. Take too long over beating a level, and all the enemies become angry, and the music speeds up to make everything pretty frantic. Continue to dawdle and you will be paid a visit by the malevolent Baron Von Blubber. An evil ghost who can't be killed and slowly stalks you, waiting for a chance to strike as you struggle to finish the level. It's when you consider that even the rules governing how long it takes all these things to happen can change between levels that you begin to understand just how creative Taito were with such a simple idea. An interesting thing about Bubble Bobble is the power-ups. They come in all shapes and sizes including tomatoes, crowns and martini glasses, but they don't actually appear at random. The game keeps track of how many times you do everything, such as bursting bubbles, jumping and so on, and uses these invisible stats to decide when each power-up appears. It's amazingly complex, but I like to think that someone could figure out the game and play to get a particular power-up more frequently. Speaking of advanced play, there are a couple of tricks you can learn, like bouncing on a bubble and blowing another at exactly the right time so that you work your way upwards, or kissing, where you kill an enemy instantly by blowing a bubble at point-blank range. Both of these become essential skills in later levels where enemies are in hard-to-reach places and break out of their bubbles almost instantly. As I said earlier, Bubble Bobble has two-player co-op, which is ridiculously good fun, and probably the best way to play the game. Even my non-gamer housemate has become addicted to it, and playing all the way through Bubble Bobble on co-op, including the true ending at the end of Super Bubble Bobble mode, is a bonding experience like few others. Something that's pretty cool about the co-op is that the second player can drop into the single player at any time, just like in Gears of War. That's right, I compare this... with this. Notable mention also goes to the music. It'll get stuck in your head because it's the same thing looping over and over, but you'll love it all the same. So, is Bubble Bobble worth spending 500 Wii points on? Well, if you've been paying any attention to what I've been saying, then it won't surprise you that, yes, it is worth downloading. In single player, it's fun. In co-op, it's like if Crack and World of Warcraft could have babies. Thank you.